Hello, and welcome back to the first episode of Time Fusion Talks, where we bring history into conversation with our modern world. I'm your host, and today we're opening a chapter from one of the grimmest periods in American history, the Great Depression. The episode today is titled The Great Depression, Financial Safeguards in the Age of Cryptocurrency. Ready to delve deep? Let's go. Picture this, it's 1929, you're standing on Wall Street and people around you are in a frenzied panic. Stock prices are plummeting and financial security is disappearing. Fast forward and the situation worsens. Banks are closing, people are out of jobs and the economy is in shambles. Now let's catapult ourselves back to today where a whole new financial revolution is unfolding. Cryptocurrencies are emerging as an alternative or perhaps a complement to traditional financial systems. But the big question looms, have we learned from our past? John Kenneth Galbraith's seminal work, The Great Crash 1929, meticulously dissects what led to the collapse of the financial system during the Depression era. Galbraith points to speculative bubbles as a primary cause. Essentially, the stock market became a game of high-stakes gambling, where even the average Joe poured money into stocks with the hope that prices would only go up. The book details how banks were investing heavily in these speculative bubbles, creating an unstable financial structure that ultimately imploded. Furthermore, Galbraith talks about the lack of adequate regulation and oversight. Authorities were unprepared for the wave of bankruptcies and defaults, and the Federal Reserve failed to take timely action to stem the tide. There was an alarming absence of transparency, and insider trading was rampant. What Galbraith's account makes clear is that the safeguards we take for granted today, such as SEC oversight, didn't exist. These hard-learned lessons led to the establishment of stringent regulations to safeguard against such collapses in the future. Before diving in, let's clarify some terms. Bitcoin is the first decentralized digital currency functioning without a central bank or single administrator. Ethereum, on the other hand, is an open-source blockchain that features smart contract functionality. It enables developers to build decentralized applications with Ether serving as the native cryptocurrency. Now, let's delve into the basics of Bitcoins and blockchains by Anthony Lewis. The book outlines some glaring vulnerabilities in today's digital financial systems, specifically touching on the topic of security. For example, the control of your digital assets is often managed by cryptographic keys. Lose these keys and you lose your assets. There's no forgot password button in the world of blockchain, which can be catastrophic in cases of loss or theft. Lewis also talks about the issue of scalability and the problems that come with it, like increased transaction fees and slower confirmation times. This is particularly concerning because one of the promises of cryptocurrencies was fast, inexpensive transactions irrespective of geographical boundaries. Another vulnerability is the risk of market manipulation. Unlike traditional financial markets, the world of cryptocurrencies is much less regulated, making it ripe for pump-and-dump schemes and other forms of manipulation. By understanding these vulnerabilities, we can better appreciate the double-edged sword that is modern financial technology. As we push the boundaries of what is possible, we also expose ourselves to new forms of risk that we are still learning to navigate. Let's journey forward into a hypothetical future. Imagine waking up one morning and reaching for your phone to check the news. Headlines scream about a major security breach in a popular cryptocurrency exchange. Millions of dollars in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other digital currencies have vanished. Your heart sinks as you open your own digital wallet to find it drained and emptied overnight. What do you do? Who do you turn to? First, let's clarify what FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, is. Established in the United States following the Great Depression, FDIC provides insurance on bank deposits up to $250,000, giving people the confidence to trust their hard-earned money with financial institutions. If a bank fails, the FDIC ensures you won't lose your money. However, in the world of cryptocurrencies, there's no FDIC. There's no centralized safety net to catch you when things go south. Here's where the ripple effect of such a breach could have devastating consequences on our daily lives. Immediate financial loss. For starters, any investments or savings you had in cryptocurrencies would be gone. This isn't like forgetting your ATM pin. This is an irrevocable loss. Bill payments. If you are one of the many who have transitioned to paying bills via digital wallets, you're suddenly unable to meet your basic financial obligations. 
late fees accumulate and services get disconnected. Trust issues, a massive breach could significantly erode public trust in digital currencies, causing a wider sell-off and plummeting values. Your other investments in digital assets could lose value rapidly. Digital identity, many blockchain platforms are not just about currency, but also serve as systems for decentralized identification. A breach could compromise your digital identity, leading to fraud and other forms of identity theft. Market instability, a significant enough breach could cause not only the cryptocurrency market to wobble, but also impact traditional financial markets. People could start pulling their investments, leading to a cascade of financial turmoil. Global repercussions, cryptocurrencies are global assets. A breach wouldn't just be a localized incident, it could have ramifications for global trade and finance. It's almost like a domino effect. One major breach could set off a chain reaction of disruptions, both minor and major, that infiltrate all aspects of modern life from our personal finances to our public institutions. The absence of a safety net like the FDIC in the world of cryptocurrencies makes the stakes frighteningly high. We are venturing into an exciting yet perilous digital future, but as we stand on the edge of this new frontier, it becomes ever more vital to institute safeguards that protect us from catastrophe. This hypothetical scenario is not just fear-mongering, it's a cautionary tale. It emphasizes why we need to seriously consider the lessons of the past to fortify our future in this daring digital age. But all is not doom and gloom. We can look to the past to implement safeguards in this new digital financial landscape. Regulations akin to Glass-Steagall could help separate utility tokens from asset-backed tokens, while an entity similar to the SEC could oversee initial coin offerings, ICOs, and other crypto transactions. Additionally, blockchain, the technology underlying cryptocurrencies, can itself be a safeguard. Its decentralized nature prevents a single point of failure, offering some inherent security benefits and the book Cryptoassets, The Innovative Investor's Guide to Bitcoin and Beyond. Authors Chris Bernisk and Jack Tatar explore the intricacies of the burgeoning field of digital assets. Among the wealth of insights offered, a few stand out as possible solutions to mitigate the risks we've outlined. Smart regulation, the authors emphasize that knee-jerk regulation could stifle innovation. They argue for a balanced approach that protects investors without impeding technological advancement. This might include creating a separate regulatory body specifically for crypto assets or integrating cryptocurrency education into the traditional financial regulatory frameworks. Multi-signature wallets. To address the vulnerability associated with losing access to your digital wallet, Bernisk and Tatar discuss the importance of multi-signature, multi-sig wallets. This kind of digital wallet requires multiple private keys to authorize a transaction, providing an additional layer of security. Decentralized exchanges, one way to mitigate the risk of a significant exchange hack is through the use of decentralized exchanges which operate without a central authority. While these come with their own set of challenges, they remove the single point of failure that centralized exchanges present. Transparency and auditing. The authors advocate for public, transparent blockchain audits to ensure the integrity of the system. Blockchain's inherent transparency could be leveraged for real-time auditing, reducing the scope for fraud and mismanagement. Insurance models. They also explore the idea of creating insurance models specifically for crypto assets. While this won't replicate the FDIC, it could offer some level of financial security in the case of a catastrophic event. Consumer education. Finally, the authors stress the importance of investor and public education in the crypto space. The more people understand how to securely manage their digital assets, the less likely they are to fall victim to basic mistakes or scams. By incorporating these insights, we see that the future isn't entirely bleak. As the saying goes, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Through education, smart regulation, and the use of advanced security features, we can mitigate the risks as we step into this brave new world of digital finance. We learn that while technology changes, the fundamentals of financial stability remain constant, transparency, regulation, and a safety net. The Great Depression serves as a crucial lesson, reminding us to proceed with caution and regulation as we enter this brave new world of digital finance. And there we have it, another chapter closed in our exploration of how the past informs the present and shapes the future. Thank you for joining me today on Time Fusion Talks. 
Until next time, remember, history isn't just where we come from, it's also a guide to where we're going.